Yeah. Even as you are waiting upon him, you know, we, we pray a lot to him, we speak to him, and we are always also ready for God also to speak unto us. So I know that we are, we are ready for his word. Mm. That is, are you the one bringing the word? Yes, please. <laughs> because I don't know myself. So, <laughs> so, so God has prepared our elder tonight. The Bible says that those that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. Amen. So the word that is coming is going to renew us. Amen. Every energy that we have lost because of the week, but because of today, as the word is coming, it's come to what? Re-energize us and empower us. Amen. So let us make our mind that the word that is coming is for you. Yes. Not for any other. Sometimes we shift the word to other people. Mm -hmm. But let us take the word literally that is coming, that the Spirit of God will speak to us. Amen. So in that reason, my time, we want to invite our elder, that God has prepared him to bring Amen. his word to us. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. 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 That amen is feeling cold. Amen. 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 Everlasting to the end of the age, you are God. You are able to save unto the uttermost those who come. Somebody to he said, I'll manage to 12 o'clock. <laughs> By 11 30, he switched on the kettle. He began to wander around the house and say, Hey, <laughs> take the tea leaf, put it in the cup, watch the clock. Hey, 12 o'clock, the water is in the pot. Hallelujah. Amen. But as for us, he has energized us. Amen. I feel like we continue this thing to next week. But now the energy is coming. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 We'll be giving a theme tonight. And our theme is the power of fasting and prayer. Amen. Amen. And our theme is taken also from the book of Ezra, chapter 8, verses 21 to 23. If somebody has opened there already, please, you can read. Preferably from the King James Version, please. Okay, King James Version, Ezra, chapter 8, verses one, uh, 21, sorry. Then I proclaimed a fast day at the river of Ahava that we might afflict ourselves before God mm. to seek of him a right way for us and for our little ones and for all our substance. For I was ashamed to require of the king's band of soldiers and horsemen to help us against the enemy in our way because we had spoken unto the king, saying, The hand of our God is upon all them for good that seek him. But his power and his wrath is against all them that forsake him. So we fasted and besought our God for this, and he was entreated of us. Amen. Amen. So, amen. amen. The last verse said, or the last stick of the sentence says, and he was entreated in us. Amen. When we fast, we don't fast in vain. Amen. When we seek his face, we, does not, we do not seek in vain. Amen. But the moment we do that in truth and in spirit, the Bible says he will entreat in us. Amen. 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 To that God says, there are certain oracles I have to come and reveal unto his people. Amen. There are certain misunderstood things in this Christian race. Those misunderstood items, number one on the list is prayer. Prayer is the most misunderstood Christian activity today. 
You can measure the size of any church not by the amount of people that come on Sundays. Not the amount of people that come in the all night or even join services. But the number of people that come in prayer meetings in the evening. That is the size of our church now. People were here on Monday or maybe Tuesday evening, Wednesday, Thursday and today we are here. On Sunday you see the whole church full, 80. Then we clap our hands, 90, then we clap our hands. That's not the measure of the size of our church. This is the size of our church. Amen. Amen. But the question is, why is it this? It's all because men don't know why we ought to pray. Prayer is a personal relationship that we build with the Father. Amen. Jesus did the same thing. And a very typical, typical example is, you can find this one in Mark chapter 1 verse 35. The Bible says, a great while before dawn, he woke up and left the house. And went to a solitary place and he prayed. And then when he came, the disciple says, where have you been? He says, I need to pray. He told them, let's go to the town. And when they went to town, they met the sick people. He said, be healed. The blind, be healed. The sick, be healed. Hey, dead body, rise up. Demons, flee away. He said, ah, how come can this man do this thing in so quick like that? This brought a question to me. I began to read the book of John. I was so much excited and fascinated by the activities that Jesus did. The miracles. Say, wow, if Jesus was a person today with me, what would I ask him to teach me? Mm. My question is, if Jesus were to be coming in this door now and say, Dikin, tell me, ask me one thing to teach you, and I'll teach you. Dikin, what are you going to say? <laughs> As for me, I want to be on CNN. BBC, Al Jazeera. I want them to see that I am the PRWC elder that can walk on water. <laughs> Who can even cause the dead to rise. Amen. So, I would say, teach, Jesus, teach me that one. After that, I want it. But one thing that baffles my mind is, the disciple did not ask anything of this. In Luke chapter 1, Luke 11, 1. After all this, he said, teacher, teach us how to pray. They realized that the moment Jesus go down there to pray in solitary with the Father, he has a commune with him. That one will set him off the day. But is that how we do? Because we don't know why we ought to pray. So, any time Jesus spends four hours with the Father, he comes back and spends one minute with man. But our own is Anderson. Mm. We spend hours trying to solve small issues, and we spend one minute with God in prayer. It can't work. So the more you have relationship with God the Father, the easier things become. Amen. Amen. That's the power that we have. This brings me to this statement, and we are going to make this our slogan. Without man, God will not. Mm. And without God, man cannot. Mm. Without man, God will no. not. And without God, man mm. cannot. You can read the entire Bible. No way did God do anything himself. Everything God did, he did it through man. Look at the deliverance from Egypt to the promised land. He said, Moses, the cry of my people has come before me, and I've come down to deliver them. Moses said, yeah, is that my problem? Mm. God said, yes, it is my problem, but I need a man. Mm. Noah, Noah, the sin of the world has come too much. I'm going to wipe the entire planet. Noah said, that's not my problem. Yeah, but you are the man. Mm. Anytime God wants to do something, you choose a man. That is where prayer was born. When he himself thought, nay, hey, it's time for me to go and deliver my people to die. God is almighty. He is sovereign. He could have jumped down from the air, from the sky. Him, here I am. But he said no. He went through the same protocol and procedure that human being gave birth. And he came as a flesh. Mm. So that tells me that prayer is not an option. It's a necessity. Prayer is therefore a cooperation between God and man to get things here done on earth. Why am I saying this? Then you go back to Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. The Bible said, God took counsel of himself and said, let us make man in our own image. When you read for that, the Bible says, so that let them have dominion over the fish, over the air, the birds, and everything. That word dominion in Hebrew means radar. Radar means in our dispensation to govern. To have rule, mm. leadership, mastery over a territory. Mm. 
So God is a gentleman that when he rents you his room in his apartment, you will never pop into your room without even knocking. You will do the same. If I rent a room in your apartment, even though I pay you monthly, will you pop into my room anyhow? No. So God gave us that mastery, that rulership, in Genesis 1.26. So anytime God wants to do something, he doesn't want to violate his own law. Lo and behold, anytime that God speaks, it becomes a law. Can you judge here with me the reason why when Adam and Eve were about to see, he did not come in? He is so faithful to his word that he doesn't want to break it. Amen. So when they were about to touch that fruit, mm -hmm. he could have come in. He's God. He could have come in. Mm -hmm. But earlier when he has spoken and said, let them have dominion. He didn't say, let us. He excluded himself from that command. Mm -hmm. That command gave birth to prayer. Because if God has given you the dominion, it's to you. To you. So when you read Psalm 115, verse 15 and 16, he said, The heavens is the Lord's, but the earth he has given to sons of men. This earth is for you and me. God will not interfere unless you ask him. This leads to my next definition of prayer. Prayer has been a legal license that we give unto God for him to act here on earth. Mm. Amen? Amen? If you don't give God a license, he will not come. You can die, he doesn't care. Yes, he has given you the dominion already. He would have said, but when Adam said, yes, but Jesus came. Jesus came and returned unto us the dominion that we lost through our father, uh, Abraham, uh, Adam. So we have the legal uh, opportunity to do everything that we want. So prayer is not just a religious activity. It's a legal activity. Say after me, legal activity. Because any time you are praying, you are giving God the license. Amen. God, I need this. Okay. Since you have called on me here, Amen. he has a lot of promises up there for us. But he has put that promise in exchange of a prayer. The moment that you go on your knees and you fast and call unto him, he says that, wow, that guy has forsaken his will. He has forsaken his own dominion and given me the power to prove that I am God. Amen. So anytime Christians we fail to pray, we limit God. Amen. Somebody can say, how can we limit God? It's in the Bible, Psalm 78, verse 41. We have seen so much. The Bible said, read there, let's see, before you come to the Ezra. Psalm 78, 41. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Verse 41. What does it say? King James. Huh? 41 says, uh -huh. Yea, they turned back mm -hmm. and tempted God mm -hmm. and limited the Holy One of Israel. Oh, how can you put a limit on this God? He's so vast, he can sit in the east and see the west. He sits in the heavens in his throne and the, his footstool is here on earth. But the Bible says they limited God. You know why they limited God? They couldn't even tell him, God, take the dominion, take the power. And work on our behalf. So the Bible says the people of Israel they limited God. If we don't pray, we are limiting God. Mm -hmm. If Christians become lazy in prayer, heaven gets lazy. Because the more you pray, the more it is activated in the heavens. That's why the Bible says whenever two or three people, or even when you pray on earth here, two people get in one accord, one man, and pray on this earth, Amen. what happens in the heavens? That's why he says again, anything that you, you, you burn on earth, what is done in heaven, is done in the heavens as well. And when you set loose, it's loose in, in heaven. So prayer means you are invoking the heavenly presence on earth. Mm -hmm. So if you know this power behind the thing that we call prayer, mm -hmm. ha, prayer the base you will not lack at home. Mm -hmm. But here the situation that we don't even know the power that we have, so we do things anyhow. But tonight God says I should tell you, if you hear this message, don't harden your heart. Pray as often as you can. Even if you are short of words, Jesus has already promised you in the book of us before he left that he will send a comforter, the advocate, who come. That whilst you are short of words, he will boost you up, then you pray. Amen. God take glory when we pray. It means that we depend on him. It means that we are nothing without him. It means that we are useless without him. But when Adam said, oh, so if I eat this, fruit, I'll become like God. That means he's dependent upon himself. But if you take the baton today 
and begin to consult this God in prayer, then it means that you are not on your own. It means that you are not dependable on your own. You depend on him. So the more you pray, the more is heaven activated. That's the power we have in us today. So prayer is a cooperation between God and man. We don't pray to rivers. We don't pray to mountains. Who do we pray to? To God. What do we want from him? For him to do something for us. So it's a cooperation. So prayer is an earthly lens, as I said earlier, to God. So that God will then intervene on our behalf. We have a lot of lunches in our pockets, yet we can't drive cars. Take a little child, for example. If I give my car key to Emmanuel, he will take the key and go and sit in the car and make it boom, boom. Because he doesn't know the purpose of the key in the car. So we'll be making noise. That's how we are today. We come here on Sunday, we make noise, there we go. But when you go for prayer meeting, a few will come. The few are those that God says they know the purpose of the key. So when we put the key into the ignition, we put on the coupling, then we start to it, then the power is highlighted. So today I want to challenge every one of you here that there's a power in us. There's a power in us called prayer. Where at all did fasting and prayer at all begin? I said earlier on that prayer was given birth right from Genesis. What about the fasting? Does it mean that if you don't fast, God will not hear you? Does it mean that when you fast, that's where God hears you better? Now when you fast, it's a sincerity that you are forgoing everything. Besides the basic necessities of life, even food, even water, for God to know that, wow, this my servant, he has humbled himself before me. And God always reward anybody who will forgo all these things. Amen. Then I said, God made us in his image. So for me to know what kind of uh, 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 image that God made, I must see who God is. For example,